What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing some cool stuff. So we have the Supra and we're actually gonna take it on the road course. This is gonna be the second time we've been on the road course. The first time was out in Vegas for the show that we filmed, uh, Banging Gears, a couple of months ago. I think that was in February. And actually out at that show, uh, we met up with some uh, really cool people. And one of them was uh, Mad Mike. <laughs> actually out here today uh, we started chatting he's like oh where are you from I was like oh Colorado we do all this stuff over there he's like well actually I'm doing Pikes Peak for the very first time in June I was like well hey if you ever get if you guys are in town and you need anything hit me up so we exchange some contact information a couple weeks later he's like hey where Pikes Peak is a go you want to show us around you want to like what should we do for testing all this other stuff Pueblo Motorsports Park Pikes Peak International Raceway and if you guys need to like store your car work on it, anything my shop's not too far away so he's like cool so uh, they're here uh, we're hanging out with them for uh, a couple days while they're doing some testing here and then uh, I figured I might as well bring out the super ticket on the road course because last time I was on the road course we had a little bit of an issue so if you didn't see that video it's gonna be up here we basically rod knocks the Supra uh, in the morning at the road course and then we replaced the engine and took it to the drag strip at night so this has a hundred percent stock stock head gasket head studs valve springs everything stock 2JZ GTE VVTi in this thing so we turn the boost down and um, we're gonna be playing around with it out here on the road course we'll see how it does also by the way if you haven't seen our Supra shirt look at that it's like a carbon copy isn't that it's sick like the same car so this was one of the most popular shirts that we just recently sold in person at the events uh, so the last weekend slush we basically sold out of these things like instantly everybody's like, I want the super shirt I want the super shirt so if you guys would like a super shirt the link will be down in the description I love the design it says guardian of the forgotten it was a forgotten it car a forgotten and now, it's, car. Like, now, now it's, it's like the guardian of them it's, it's just out here like protecting them doing all that other stuff so it's a cool shirt but uh, I want to go rip this thing Nice shot, bro. Yeah, thank you. Right. Even like the junkyard, I'm just like, fuck, like looking yeah. at the stuff out the back, the van out the front. Yep. Because I've got, I've built one of those vans. Yeah, you showed us the last time. I was like, there's some vans there too. There's some Dodge vans out back too. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, twin G40, similar setup to we run on the FD championship yeah. car. But even with these, bro, like there's no lag. Like these G series, even the size on the four, they just come on like a freaking shotgun, eh? That's wild. Is it the G40 1150 or the 900? Uh, 1150. Yeah. We're just doing FD the other weekend in Japan and like I'm lining up on the grid. I'm, I'm just looking around like how freaking cool drifting is now for mm. the amount of support, like manufacturer support, obviously with ourselves with Mazda and but Toyota heavily involved in the, in the sand. Like they got the new Z, there's all the new GR Supras, Corollas, the Yaris's. Yeah. I'm like, man, look how much money's in the in drifting now. So cool. And then I'm yeah. like, hold on. I'm in like FD RX7. This is like a hundred thousand dollar car stock. <laughs> on them. They're, like, yeah. they're looking at me like, oh yeah, crazy Gaijin. Yeah. yeah. Crashing expensive car. I'm in yeah. like the vintage bit. We're the oldest car. It's a 1992 RX7. So it's the first gen of the series. Yeah. Well, series six. It's the oldest car in Formula Drift. Wow. Because I went and asked like the other guys with the 180s yeah. and there's a couple of the older chasers and they're like, yeah, 94 and then 95 so there's like some mid 90s but then yeah it's crazy to think that they've because yeah. they you still look at it and it still looks like a late model car mm -hmm. yeah yeah they're cool i've always wanted one and i like cars you know like i have uh two js 14 and then obviously the mustang on the lift 
yeah, the yeah, I saw that with the turbo. What's the one that had the turbo? Oh, V8 that's a uh, Fox Body. Yeah. It has a turbo LS, and we run it out here. Oh, they're actually doing drag races tonight. Oh, it is an LS. I was like, we're filming before. I'm like, oh, I'm not like a V8 guy, so I don't, I'm not <laughs> going to say it's an LS because it's probably not being a yeah. Ford, but it was an LS. Yeah. yeah, I have a S550, which is a 2015 Mustang. Oh, yeah. On the lift, and I have the 7.3 Godzilla, which yeah. is like the engine that's in like the new Ford trucks over here. Oh, the, yeah. the gasoline version yeah. or whatever. Um, how did you go banging gears? We raced the, a twin turbo Lamborghini on the road course, and then we rod off the Supra at the track. Basically, I think it was like 11 in the morning. Found an engine locally. I had it swapped back in, and then we ran uh, later that night at like 8 p.m. at the drag strip. Oh, so yeah. we threw a new engine in it. Far out. So, Wild. Yeah, we just swapped it right there in the garages at the show. It'll be a cool episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The one Because they filmed the whole thing of me swapping yeah. it at the track. Because it's all stock bottom end stuff yeah. you know so i basically grew up out here like in middle school well in high school like every day i just ride my buddy had a house right over here and there's just miles of trails all the way yeah. around here and so you could just like we rode from his house every day and just would come out here and, and shred so it's all stock right now obviously it was just a stock one. Oh yeah so um, it's still got that same right hi yeah, hey dude how's it going sorry you just opened up your head now. oh yeah <laughs> you're riding on the track yeah oh you're crazy then we are Oh, that's me right there. Oh, <laughs> I'll backflip a motocross bike, but I'll never take a road bike on a freaking road course. Eh? <laughs> in my own car is like 140 something i'll look at the thing here in a minute how are we doing we're doing great it's been a minute first time on the road course all year all year dude the brakes are so good brakes feel great on this thing First time laps, first everything, but like the seat, you're thrown everywhere. Like I'm on 14 pounds of boost. We're, we have her turned down a bit. I could probably go out there and, and center the vet. I did 147, Something, I think. Yeah, I think it was 147. Pretty decent yeah. around here. Uh, RSX Type S was like I think 159 or one or 202, but literally that was like 100% throttle everywhere. This thing, I'm like short shifting. I'm braking short. I'm doing everything short. I want to keep it nice. I was very surprised at how well the brakes felt, how good the tires were. Like it just feels planted and it's a very, very, very solid car. Feels nice. How does it sound on track? <laughs> it sounds glorious. It probably just sounds the, like the just oh all of it. I mean, I like it when I'm driving. It. It's just like a symphony. It's like <laughs> just like barely fluttering through the corners and stuff. We always need to put like a GoPro in there in to there. get like the noises and stuff of it. But technically, on that last lap, I would have did a 152. Really? So I did a 140. I think it was a. I need to look at the data. So faster than the 350Z. It's a little bit more comfortable. Felt a little bit better in it. Again, still not sending her full hard because there was one time I was like over there. I was like, Ooh, like I felt like I was gonna go off the thing. So I was like, chill out a little bit. But um, she angry? She was getting like a smidge hot, like 235. Well, it's like sitting here, so it's probably boiling. Yeah. It was 235 on the track. As soon as I keyed on it, it was like 240 something. Yeah, so it's just sitting there boiling. Yeah, it's just a lot of heat to like come back, park it, turn it off. I let it idle for like, you know, two minutes before I turned it off. But I mean, the car does good. I mean, I know that these aren't really like road course cars, but it feels pretty good. Like if I had a seat, that's the other thing. I'm using the steering wheel to hold myself up in the corners. You're literally like these seats, you just like slide out of them. It's just like Maybe a that's stop, the next thing we should do to this stop thing, seat like, belt. Seats, yeah. I think I want to bring out the Corvette. Like, yeah. And 
really dial it in. Because that thing, that's what it's meant for. It has a seat, it has a handbrake, it's a C, C606, like it, that, that's what they're meant to do. Dry some. I also need to do the hill toe. I'm not good with the hill toe. Like that that was one thing. I was going in the corners like, hur, hur, you know, like doing that. This is one thing I've never like learned was the hill toes. So we'll figure that out eventually. It feels good. I'm, I'm curious to see how it sounds. Hopefully you guys liked how it sounded. Cooling. Going back out? Yeah, we're just gonna go with no aero, but it sounds good out there. Yeah. What train is yeah, it? Uh, yeah. Honda RD6 oh, okay. SS. Yeah, sounds good. The blips and all that stuff. Well, that's me. That's me friggin' with my feet. There's no auto blip or anything oh, on really? it. Really? No flat shift. No assists on that thing, man. Wow. Raw. I thought I heard a cut when you were shifting, or is that just? No, that's just me on the. Yeah. So well, because I don't, I don't lift my right foot, so that'll be yeah. just spiking that limiter. Here's the computer then. Yeah. When we, when we first drove it, because the column goes straight between the brake and the throttle, yeah. it's all good when they set it up. And when I drove it, I'm like, go to heel toe. I can't reach the bloody throttle because the steering column is in the way. Sounds like I need one. <laughs> faster than I was. Oh, uh, it's squirrely too. Well, 1400 horsepower, rear wheel drive. It's ba it's literally a drift car with slicks on it right now. It's yeah. pretty much what it is, minus an angle kit, which they're they're working on that. But bummer, they're having some issues with the cooling system. Drifting for a lap for a minute going sideways is different than staying on a road course, full send. <laughs> Good. Ah, see, overheating. Mike, what do you think about uh, the track? Dude, the track is so freaking fun. You come off like the drag strip where it's like drifting the first section because it's so slippery. Yeah, all the rubber and stuff all there. All the rubber, I mean, yeah. And then you get off it, and then it's a long straight, so you get, I don't know, I didn't even look at the speedo to be fair, but freaking fast into the big sweeper. And then from there on is where the excitement really starts. Cause you've got, you can see where the normal radius and contour of the track goes, mm -hmm. but there's all the little bits in between. And this thing obviously with no assists, and I mean, even low boost was still well over a thousand horsepower at a just. Yeah, you could hear it when you, oh, when it yeah. spins. It's like, what? 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 But yeah, wow. just the elevation, up, down, round, the little bumps, the apexes, you can run on the rumbles, like it's a freaking, I'd like this to be the, my backyard, that's for sure. No, that's, uh, it's crazy because it literally is in my backyard. Yeah. And it's crazy because this thing, it's basically drift car without an angle kit, rear wheel drive, no traction control, no auto blip, no nothing, like you're the computer in this thing. Yeah, we've got a lot of the technology to be able to do that through the Haltech as well of the Hollinger. We've got, but I just find like those, aids like almost defect the car like the shifting with the rotary like pulls it out of boost yeah I don't, obviously we haven't tested it up yeah. pike's peak but i feel like just the on and off and just i don't know it's just a technique that i've always kind of driven with yeah with the, like drifting technique hydraulic handbrake for instance when i race the gt3s the amount of times i'd like come into a corner and be like just naturally kind of go for the handbrake where yeah. you could continue the momentum and just not so much lock the rear wheels yeah. up but just slow them down enough to like upset the car to then actually be able to get the radius little things like that that you're just used to it's just natural instinct as a driver i mean i haven't had eats of seat time circuit racing all i have had has been in a gt3 which is almost cheating because yeah they're, they're just, so easy to drive fast because you're just got, good you got so many aids the abs is freaking incredible the tc i pretty much wound all the way off on the gt3 we're mm. in the mclaren yeah i mean this car it's wild well we just have cooling issues man so this is basically the air which normally drifting you're kind of sideways sideways right? so it would work for drifting but yeah we've got a big radiator so pwr have made us you know we run this sys, like system in all our drift cars and they keep cool thing is with Mazda wanting to keep the body as factory as possible so it resembles a Mazda 3. I don't know, I, I'm looking straight at cutting holes in the roof, ducting, so we've got, you know, we've got a duct here, right, but it's not forcing air into the radiator. It's still kind of got a bite. It's going around this, like, chicane itself. Yeah. We took the hatch off to see because maybe it was the messy 
hot air that's drawing through it that was still keeping it hot. That didn't change a thing, so it's the air that we're feeding into it. We've got a big yeah. oil cooler up the front, big um, oil cooler, it's cooler as well. And how hot is hot for like this engine? Uh, well, 119, so that's, I mean, boiling is like 100 degrees is boiling, yeah. so it's getting pretty hot, but we run out of Formula E cars. What's, nine, what's 119 in Fahrenheit? No idea. I, I don't know that either. All I know is like a hundred, a hundred in Celsius is pretty hot. That's like two hundred and yeah. something, right? Yeah. So, what? Two twelve. Okay. See, the metric system makes more sense because what? At zero, you freeze, and at yeah, a hundred, it you boil. Yeah, I remember doing a um, project in Japan at the most northern tip, and it was minus fifteen degrees, and that is freaking cold. And then I remember a couple of Americans going, bro, harden up, that's not even freaking cold, man. I'm like, well, zero is freezing, it's freaking cold, man. It was so cold, I couldn't even talk to do the interviews. My jaw was locking. Up. Yeah. But yeah, Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Especially when people come from out of the country and we're talking about uh, Ben from Artec, he was here and we were like sitting there converting numbers back and forth, just trying to talk to each other about like- Dude, measurements, measure your guys' measurements are screwed, dude. Like it's so difficult, millimeters, centimeters it rather than a quarter of five thirty second i'm like what no how even sizes that no yeah like, it, it's really confusing i, I, really I don't like to it pay either. attention at school on equations and mm -hmm. that i didn't do it's fun having you guys out here it's cool seeing like the team and the setup and see you guys kind of yeah, work man, through well, the issues and having us man i really appreciate you opening up the shop yeah for us to come out i mean we only met this year but banging gears eh? yeah we might do like a little tour with mike around the junkyard and see what kind of stuff he wants to try to like ship over to new zealand oh, or yeah. something by the end of the day. i already saw the van out the front <laughs> with badges and little bits and pieces that yeah. i just built a g30 which was la baseball team van and then we jacked it and four by four swapped it yeah i seen that on your instagram um, that thing's sick always got a big old chevy in the fleet somewhere yeah you have to Built old duallys and i think we're done ripping the super for today but we're gonna catch up with you guys yeah that's cool i got to follow you all right we were back at the shop after hanging out at the track what do you think what do you think well we're finding treasure mate well you actually found this yeah. this could be worth a lot of money so it's a 1964 nickel and it looks like it's like copper either that or it corroded or something but that's kind of cool, right? I just love this sort of stuff. I find like I drive really slow on the motorway, especially mm. in the States, because I'm just looking at everyone's yards and like <laughs> looking down and like, you never know what you're going to find. Half the projects in old Chevys I've built and then shipped back to New Zealand. The shipping companies actually like called me up to triple check why I want to send such a pile of shit back to New Zealand. Oh, trust me, I'll send you some photos when I finish with it. You might find some badges or a fender or a whole project or, you know, I do exactly the same in Japan and all other countries. I think like the perks of my job traveling as much as drifting and doing what I need to do on the track, building cars and giving them their own character. You look at Rad Bull, Rad Bull was actually came from a, a junkyard as well. Oh, any Maz spares about an hour from my place. We found an NC chassis. Wow, that's, that's so we're gonna find thing. some snakes. He wants to find a snake when we're out here. But one of the things that uh, we were at Banging Gears, obviously that's where I met Mike. And the first thing that he was, we were like in the little room, like we we're just all hanging out with everybody. And he was talking to somebody else and he was like talking about scrolling marketplace. And I was like, marketplace? Like that's my, <laughs> that's my kind of guy over there. So then we started chatting and here we, we are. are. Now motion auto. Freaking we got Kuato and the team from Japan. They're currently um, wrenching on the car. Nothing too major. We had our first two runs this morning up the hill. So really freaking excited from playing Pike's Peak on PlayStation when I was like 13 to actually now running it like, honestly the nerves like i've go through a lot of stuff a lot of people look at my like man you just don't get nervous but I, i'm always nervous you're not nervous the reward ain't big enough you know so man the nerves were running pretty thick this morning because of the weather like it was snowing at the top we were meant to be running the top section but that got obviously snowed out so we ran the bottom section which was quite cool because that's probably the fastest part i think of the track and like i've done a lot of time now on the simulator like trying to memorize like all the corners because a lot of them are the same and flat six gear but then some of them look the same but it's the first gear hairpin and i got about three corners in dude and i i was lost because the first section they do actually look exactly the same but it wasn't until i got kind of up to the switchback bits when i'm like ah yeah this one goes into like a double apex and then i could kind of and i mean we only got two runs it's just they close the road this morning we have to be there at like 3 30 and then we run start running at 5 a.m and then we finish at 8 a.m because then they open it back up for the public to be able to drive through so limited test time but we're back tomorrow morning for another three o'clock start we're gonna go look around the junkyard yeah check it out. <laughs> I don't know what that is it's definitely not a chevy so it's it's a buick it's basically it, no it's a skylark 
Oh yeah. So it's I guess it's similar to an Impala, I think. Yeah. I don't know much about old cars. Your jam is like 80s, 90s, 2000s. Well, and then like the more like Japanese cars, you know, like T40Zs and like Dachshunds yeah. and things like that. Like old American cars like Plymouths and Nashes yeah, yeah. and like weird. This thing down here, like that is freaking sick. I'm the same. Like if it's Mazda, I don't care what era it is, man. I know exactly what model, what make, what year, how many editions that came in, what models, what motors, configurations, twin dizzy, whatever. And Chevy's quite a lot of Chevys because I've built quite a lot of Chevys over the years from you know doing jewelry not nothing like track stuff more just like our family cruisers with our big c35 dualies that we've body dropped and put our colors on or freaking we just did the van which we found at la again going back to marketplace yeah oh no it was a craigslist find actually in new zealand we don't even have craigslist but you just search like los angeles craigslist and i found this la baseball team van and built that up yeah met a dude uh, in bakersfield he's just like a chevy 4x4 guy so he knew exactly what at, went again to a junkyard it's like looking for dana 60 axle here and this breaks to be able to piece it all together put the leaf hangers in it and turn this van into like a full 4x4 like all, all old like K5 yeah we'll, we'll have to put like a picture of it on the oh, screen because yeah, it's pretty it impressive it it's right there that's it and it's freaking cool. And he was showing me pictures of that when we were at the but show. But look at this. Like, I've never seen anything like this. I have no idea what freaking... Yeah, the, the but look at the front fenders. That is so sick. Imagine yeah. that bag. Imagine some steering angle under there. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> with some part shot max in there, you wouldn't, still wouldn't get much. Um, yeah, no, this thing's crazy. I, I feel like I just need to buy it. Because I feel like every time we show it to somebody, they're like, I want it. Man, look yeah. at like even the dash in the column. Like that whole column, bro, like is like off a fighter jet. I just love all the other stuff that you find in old cars, like this old tin can, freaking old western coffee tin. Oh wow. 20 cents <laughs> worth of coupons. And actually there. the one thing, I've already done a whole lap around this yard and I've noticed there's quite a few bullet holes and windscreens. And this is a Porsche, what's that, a 914? Yeah. Oh yeah. And I guess those things are kind of getting expensive now. And then yeah. this, there's just one cut up right here. Yeah. And some dude that's restoring one somewhere needs that freaking aerial freaking chrome piece or a chrome trim that's sitting right here. Yeah. Do you like that van, the Econoline van? Uh, I looked at doing an Econoline, but I just, I don't know. I like the, the G series mm -hmm. Chevys. Let's go check these buses out. Look at the freaking, see, bullet holes. I told you, I was just talking about bullet holes. And if freaking someone shot up at the freaking school bus, or maybe it was a party bus. But look at the front of that, bro. Like, that's just got so much character. Yeah, I've never like, seen anything like it. Look at it with the slanted like twin screen, the headlights, like southern, the grills. Look at these like tow hooks that somebody made, or like wild. at least rewelded back together. And watch out for them rattlers, bro. Wow, there's a lot of radiators. Oh, yeah, so that's that? like a junkyard hack is you just buy a bus, oh, and yeah. that's where you store all your radiator. Like you'll have like a radiator bus, and then you'll have like a transmission bus, and you'll have a differential bus. Look, look how sick all the sliding windows and stuff up there. I'm pretty freaking, probably haven't moved since. I think this is the engines in the rear too. In there. Cam and lever steering. Oh yeah, look at that nest right there. That, holy shit. What do you reckon's in that? Oh yeah. But imagine how cool you would have been being a schoolboy being picked up by this every morning when it was like in its prime in the 60s or whenever this thing's from. Friggin' old Chev. That's a really cool school bus. Oh man, imagine that, just using all the body, just build a chassis, motor, suspension, and then just dump this body on the top. Like a newer Duramax, you know, yeah, like yeah. a 06, like an LBZ, like dually frame or something, buy a rolled one put that frame or at least those axles in the modern engine and stuff in here and then use it to like tow your tow your race car yeah now we're talking just all this, is, this one is for storing seats and surfboards it's got shag carpet in it and it's moist <laughs> is, is the snakes like moist hot areas or oh i don't think they're, they're oh, there's not. the freaking other end of the surfboard ah. like who knows mate wow. mick fanning might have surfed this one day and could be worth a lot of money. Did you ever watch that show on Discovery Channel where it was like Junkyard Wars? Yeah, yeah, I was just talking to Tommy about that and I was like, literally you could make a freaking YouTube, Netflix, whatever series, just just going to junkyards, not even building anything. Just going like, look at this, look what you, like just the random stuff yeah. you find. You'd probably end up selling a lot of stuff for yeah, people. Yeah, because people will be like, oh man, yeah, they went to that one in freaking middle of Nebraska and freaking. <laughs> yeah, and they'll just like get in their truck or they'll call them and say, hey, I need that thing that was in this video like, look at that one that one's got a sick front on it too old yeah. chev i see i've never even seen this one here it's in the pile of them but i've never like 
actually came over and looked at it. More bullet holes, look. <laughs> Shit. And they don't look like they're just from someone just having fun out here with a shooting range. They look like they're they might done be. a long time ago. Or, Maybe, or, I mean, yeah. or you got a few guns in there. Maybe. We got a couple, but we don't... Uh, <laughs> I don't shoot the, the windows out. He wants and see if it's even like what you <laughs> want to... Yeah! See if you want to sell them or not. Single ski. Good to go. But you wait till you see what I show you to go with the skis. Oh, there's a freaking sick boat over here. I mean, there's a lot of boats. Look, you got a freaking, you got a lot of choice of freaking some old. Yeah, look at that. Too. There it is. Look at this. Look at this thing. Wow. Dude, like even the old school Mercury outboard on it, like with the chrome around the, the motor, got the old school gas cans, the old seat, got like the wings on the side. Even the trailer looks, got the old turbo wheels. Yeah, those are cool. Like this doesn't seem that far away from being like a project that you could go and just like. Is there a local lake? Or, what do you guys? Oh, yeah. No, there's one right there. Fuck! Imagine rolling up with this. Oh, two stroke! Look at the it's motor, so, bro. Like it's. It's so, so cool to cool. see the things that he finds interesting, you know, because it's like different country, different everything pretty much and then now we have all this old school stuff which you've probably seen in like movies and like yeah, you yeah. probably don't even have this stuff yeah i saw the boat over there from jaws that was my pick i'll show you later i found the old wakeboard too and it legit looks like the boat that was in jaws <laughs> number one like it's even looks like it's been bitten by the shark but yeah look at the little wings on the side imagine having one of those old chevys with this behind it freaking just rolling up to the yeah. lake eh? like well actually that that behind this i'll show you what's on the other side of this truck so it's the same model as the van I just built, but this is like the camper version. I mean, this is from the late 70s. So it's got the round lights. This thing. Oh yeah. Man, so I want the badges, the lights, the grill. To convert yours to- To convert mine so it looks like 70s instead of 90s. But look at that freaking the sign writing, the freaking, it's, that is, cool man this is, 70s as it gets. this is almost too cool to start pulling parts off though because yeah. it's, it's almost too close to being a project like most that's, people look at this thing but dude it's a freaking pile of junk bro like, <coughs> look at that. Well, but i look at it like this is like not far away from being usable usable yeah, yeah. going that's, and has a generator too that's yeah. that means it was the high-end model the yeah. painted stripes like it has certain things like the hot water heater that looks like it's been replaced yeah yeah and that the, looks pretty recent the too, tires like. aren't old it has like a bluetooth stereo and it has blinkers and a phone mount this thing's been on the road oh my god <laughs> what the fuck Oh, wow. Need an Arctic cat? Yeah. Holy of them. shit. <laughs> bit, of, bit of freestyle. Oh, right out. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Throttle still work. Throttle cable's still there. Oh, man, this one's already in Lynx colors, too. Mm -hmm. It's got his purple and teal. That's kind of cool, right? I haven't even seen this. It's yeah, just like in the middle of nowhere. like. Wild. All right, so we didn't find any snakes? We didn't find any snakes. I felt like this was the perfect terrain, and you've showed me the video of the big ones sitting frickin' right there. Wrong time of the year. But well, we found a like, lot of cool parts that I definitely want to take a whole frickin' container back to <laughs> New Zealand. Yeah, I think everything's cool. It seems like he's the same way. Yeah, I usually like just pieces of shit <laughs> and making them something that people will talk about. I appreciate you coming. Uh, Shout out, man. Well, thank you. Yeah, we've still got a few days to hang out. So, man, thank you again, Trevor, the team down here, Motion Auto freaking legends hosting us while we're here in the states of pikes peak yeah see, see you on later. the hill Yew.